Hey, what's up, Grace Church? Uh, welcome to the weekly. This is Scott. It's the week of August 13th, already halfway into the month. That's crazy. If you were here last week, either house church or church on Sunday, uh, you will remember we took a little break. We're taking a little break from the book of Acts, and we're talking through uh, actually the content of a book called Live No Lies, uh, authored by John Mark Comer. The book looks at and emphasizes that they are three enemies of our soul, you and I, three enemies against us that will steal and rob us of our peace and diminish our relationship with God. So we're going to talk about that today. Okay, guys, so last week we talked about the first enemy of the soul. Here are the three, the devil, the flesh, and the world. And so last week you were stoked when you came into church and we talked about the devil. And you're like, what the heck? I came to church to talk about the devil? What's happening? But we wanted to uh, look at who the devil was and what he does in our world, like the influence he has over us and over our world. And so we talked uh, that he has influence in our lives by offering up lies, lies that mentally we process in our mental maps. We talked all through that. But as we talk about that, we, we have to think of it in also very practical ways and practical terms. Like how does that affect our behavior, our ways of communicating, uh, our patterns of doing the things we do, all of those type of things. And so uh, this week is talking about the flesh. And so uh, this is how practically those lies play out in our lives once they've influenced us. And so uh, the flesh is defined in three ways in Scripture, which I talked about on Sunday. The first one is our humanity or our body, the physicality of our human experience, everything physical in the world, but us as humans, our flesh is our bodies. Um, and then the second one is our ethnicity. I pointed you to a scripture where the Apostle Paul is talking about the fact that he's Jewish and how that doesn't give him a leg up in the kingdom of God. And so it, uh, when we hear the flesh used in that form or in that way, that term, it is his ethni our ethnicity, our race, our language, our culture, those parts of our identity that are important to us, um, but the term was used in that way. But the third one, and kind of the, um, the most significant way that it's used, especially in the New Testament, and for our topic, is in our corrupt desires. Or last week, we, we termed it our disordered desires desires. And the idea is that we have the things that we love in life and we have the things that we desire, but they are in a bad order. We have re, we need to reprioritize and, and uh, undo the disorder of our desires. And so we look at a couple of scriptures, primarily in Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2 says, and you were dead, this is Paul, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins in, one, in which you once walked. Listen to this. Following the course of this world, remember one of the three enemies is the world, following the prince of the power of the air, that's one of the devil's names, the uh, prince of the air, prince of the power of the air, remember that, and the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Verse 3, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our what? Our flesh, our desires, carrying out the desires in two ways, of the body and of the mind, and we're by nature of wrath let, uh, like the rest of mankind. So that's our flesh. It's the disordered desires, the corrupt passions and desires that we have and we carry out in our, in our lives, and it ends up being sin largely. So the question is, how do we combat those, uh, how do we combat the flesh? How do we combat those desires? We, we think that those are the most important desires. I talked about on Sunday how they, those are actually the surface level desires, but each one of us have a deeper desire within us to know and be known by our Creator and uh, to live in love and peace uh, within the kingdom of God. And underneath all of it is that. But the Bible says that we are to crucify the flesh and then walk in the Spirit. And, the, and we had talked about another scripture where the Spirit and the flesh are opposed to one another. They're enemies. They're against one another. And we all feel that, that tension inside of us. But to crucify the flesh 
is to starve the flesh. And we'll talk about that in, in a second again. But we are also to walk in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit. You know, like I got, yeah, real helpful, Scott. What does that mean? That's a spiritual Christian answer, but what does that mean practically? There's a rule. We talked about it, but the rule or a law uh, amongst humanity is this that, uh, you know, and the world calls this, this rule or law karma. I hate that word. I hate that word. It just takes God outside of it. It's karma. Karma will get them. I hate that. However, there is a principle there that is very biblical and very true. It's the law of reciprocity. You reap what you sow. Remember verses, you will reap what you sow. So what you sow into, you will get from. You will, uh, you will reap back what you put in. And so uh, the more you sow into your flesh, the more you reap the flesh, the more you want to, and you know this, the more you eat, you, you overeat, we all overeat because we want more and it tastes good. And, and so just at a very base level, you want more and more to feed the appetite, feed the cravings. And that goes from something uh, like that, which to a lot of us is not big of a deal, but it's a thing into um, sexual stuff, addiction, all kinds of different things where we, where we uh, will reap what we sow. We want more and more and more. And pretty soon we find ourselves into a horrible place um, where we're just caught in a prison of this behavior, of this feeding into the flesh. Here's the cool thing, though, because that's a trap that all of us have experienced. But also the same is true about the Spirit. The more you sow into the Spirit and feed the Holy Spirit inside of you and sit in the presence of God the more you will reap the Spirit. You will grow in the Spirit as opposed to growing in the flesh. And so for the flesh, you starve it. And so Sunday, I ended the message and we talked about two areas, two ways and practices to implement to starve and crucify the flesh. Number one is fasting. And so I don't know what, what day you're watching this on, hopefully earlier in the week. Um, but for example, my house church is on Thursday. And I'm asking the entire church to fast on Thursday, to fast from when you wake up till 3 p.m. Now, don't go crazy. Don't pass out. Hydrate, get your nutrients, do what you need to do, but to largely fast. And we provided some prayer prompts. It's in the uh, outline uh, as well, but some prayer prompts uh, throughout the day to where we as a church can be praying together as we fast. And the idea is simple. And by the way, let me clarify something. A biblical fast isn't like, I'm going to fast from TV or from Netflix or from social media. That's abstaining, abstinence, right? I'm abstaining from those things. Biblically, fasting is food. And, and it's specific to food because it's specific to body. And so you are starving the body to feed the soul and the spirit. And that is the concept. Starve the flesh and crucify the flesh so you could feed the spirit in you. So while you don't eat, and it's, it's hard because you're so hungry, every time you hunger, you go to the Lord. Every time you hunger, you pray, you open up his word, you feed the spirit, and so that you go to God, because the physical need, you are, are meeting a spiritual need in its place. Uh, the second thing is confession, and this is a hard one for us. Uh, we don't want to be told what to do. We don't want to let people know our deepest, darkest secrets. But yet there are safe people where it's very healthy to go to them and say, I need to confess sin or struggle or my tendency to do fill in the blank and confess. Uh, so there again is uh, a fasting, starving the flesh and confession. And so those two practices really help us resist the flesh and feed the spirit, resist the flesh and feed the the spirit. And so uh, those two things is kind of what I ended the message on. And uh, now I want to turn it over to you guys. Now that the topic is front of mind, uh, I want to turn it over to the house church leaders to, we have some questions for you guys to discuss.